Hello everyone and welcome to an introduction to the blending board and making your own uh, poonies or rologs or whatever you want to call them. This is my lo-fi setup as I only have the tripod and uh, we're at my kitchen table. It is very cluttery. This is my Ashford blending board. I have it set up in the back. As you will see, it's got a little standy thing so you can sit it up. There are three different uh, levels you can set it at. I have it set at the highest so that I can show you the easiest. Whatever works for you and makes you the most comfortable is what you want to go with. Um, I've got bits and bobs of all kinds of different fiber here in case I want to play around. Now, your blending board will probably come with your cleaner. And I just cleaned this again. So this guy will help you pick up everything you don't want in there or take off stuff that gets left behind. You'll get your two dowels. Your dowels act very similar to a doffer stick that you get with the drum carter. And this is how you roll off your poonies, which I will show you. I'm gonna call them poonies for the sake of it, even though I know that that's only specifically referring to roll logs that are done with cotton. But that's what I'm most comfortable with. Go with whatever works for you. There's no knitting police coming to get you. So the purpose for this, or what I intended to do, or the reason I'm making this video is I had asked people and people said they wanted to see it, but I have this gorgeous, it's a Merino Yak blend. It's from the Spunky Eclectic Club in 2013. And uh, it's two ounces of 60-40, which is gorgeous and wonderful. And I love it and I love the color, but I wanna spin it on my drop spindle and I prefer to spin Poonie roll eggs, rolly poon eggs, whatever, uh, on my drop spindle. And so this was my, my grand masterful plan. It is so soft and wonderful. And you'll see here that I just ripped some off, ripped off a section. Now you don't have to use specifically the, the prepped fiber. I have some. This is Cotswold and Textile Locks. There's gonna be a lot of crinkling, so if crinkling bugs you, I apologize. This is just locks that have been dyed. I got them from uh, Alpaca Fiber Solution. Uh, they were sold by the Spotted Circus one year at SSK. And I have some, I think this is Texel locks. Same thing going on here. In here I've got all kinds of, I've got recycled sari silk. I've got noils, I've got, um, what the heck is it called? Firestar nylon, I've got just some bags of solids over here. For when I like to play around and, and do some blending, I've got alpaca and everything else. I've got, I've basically got the kitchen sink going on here and I can grab anything I want. Little baggies, little baggies. These are for fat, for my fat fiber. Yeah, this is 0.3 ounces of Border Leicestershire locks. And uh, yeah, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take whatever fiber you're using. In this case, I'm gonna start with the silk merino. I might blend in some other stuff just to just to play around, but what you wanna do is slowly, starting at the top, drag it down your board. And the board is going to collect. As you can see, it's collecting the fibers as I run it down. And that is how, the other thing is when you're doing this, you can also do this if you wanna blend out some colors. Like if you have a very chunky, um, for instance, this part is very, this fart, this fart, this part is very purple. This part is very yellow or orangey. If I'm not a big fan of having such big, bold colors, I can mute them by blending them together, which is a bit of color theory that I'm not gonna go into too much, but uh, whatever you blend is going to have a different effect and it's gonna spin different. It's gonna muddy it up quite significantly. And uh, if you can take any, if you can find anything by Maggie Casey or if you can uh, take a class by her, she is really great at color theory. There's also a book called, I believe it's Spinning in Color. I will put it in the show notes 
for this one. I'll put it in the YouTube notes as well. That has a lot of color theory when it comes to spinning and those ones are really good resources. And you just want to pack it on, not too much, like you don't you don't want to get it so full that you can't put any more on. But uh, in this case, I am just muddying the crap out of it and I'm okay with that because my goal is to have a really nice uh, blended puny rather than a very stark barber pole, which is what you're gonna get if you don't. You see how I have these? I can pick those off, that's fine. And if you see um, some naked areas or areas you don't like, you can just pull them out and do what you want. In this case, I think to add a little oomph, oomph in the thickness, as they would say on um, Worst Cooks in America. Yeah, that was a Worst Cooks in America episode. I want to add just a base color to this, something a little basey. I have some just genuine general colors. And what do I have going on over here? Let's just let's just examine what I've got going on here in this bag. What do I got? I got some Firestar. I got some Alpaca. I've got some balls. I got some balls of randomness. I like this. I think this is a little wet. I, I'm almost. What are you? Are you super felty? No, you're okay. I think I'll add some of this just to bring the color up a, a, a notch, not a lot, just a little bit. And for this one, and because I want to make them all the same, I'm going to keep everything I'm using out so that I can just keep reusing what I got going on here. And see how very little blue is taking up in some spots? I'm okay with that because I just want to add it in some brightness and I'm not adding it all the way throughout you can use your hand to help maneuver things around and then do I want some fire star in there do I want sparkle what level of sparkle? I don't think I want sparkle. I think I'm okay without the sparkle. You just go in and get some of this back in there. Now, if you want to double check everything's okay, you can just bring it down. I make noises, I'm sorry. I'm like a choo-choo train over here. Don't like what's going on over there. We'll bring it up over here. Put that in over there. We want to smooth everything down. The other thing about this brush is it's a smoother when you go one way and it's a cleaner when you go the other way. So do, it does double time and it does it well. Now notice you can see the tines very clearly on the board. There's a lot of space. We want that. We don't want them so packed that they can't move around because that will um, be really hard to spin, be really hard and unpleasant. So then what we want to do to take it off, I'm going to move this bag out of the way because I'm not going to use a lot of things that are in it. As I've already decided I'm going to be blending these two together. I may add in some sparkle bits at some point, but that's okay. So now to take it off, we're going to take our, our, our sticks and what we're going to do is we're just ever so gently going to fluff up this end here. And what we want to do is we want to get a stick underneath. We want to put a stick on top. So basically we've got it sandwiched in here. Sorry, my coffee's right here too. We've got it sandwiched right in here. I'm gonna put it over here so it doesn't get in our way. Between our two sticks and we're gonna roll. So it's like that. And then we're gonna lift it up and pull ever so slightly and roll. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull down a little 
to pull to tighten it and then lift it up and roll it and we're gonna do that the whole way up and the little bit of pull is what keeps everything so nice and compact in there for spinning purposes you don't want to do it too much because you don't want to rip it in half and you got to keep in mind what fibers you're using but as you do that you're really building your your puny roll egg for its purpose and too, but again too tight and it's really a beast to spin you just want to unlock those fibers and if you see them sliding off your ends you can push them back in to get locked in and up and do and up and up and just smooth everything down so now we've got our rolls we just want to wriggle them a little so what you're gonna do is you're gonna wriggle these a little and then you're gonna take one end of one one end of the other and you're gonna pull and essentially what's gonna happen is one of them is gonna slide out all the way see what I'm doing here I'm just pulling slowly and now I'm compressing a little at the sides to pull because I don't want my roll log to like flume too much and you can see that it's gone off now it's just on one and one poop 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 and it's off there I have it and it's ready to go and it's ready to be spun or you can turn it into a circle if you want so I'll do one more. We'll go through one more of these. You can do as many or as little as you want. I'm just gonna clean up the top here with my with my guy. Little fuzzies left behind. No biggie. No big deal. Right. So where's my other end? The end I started with. Here we go. Again, we've got our ends. Now if you're into color and you want to keep them all the same color or you want to keep the colors very consistent, you can actually just tear them up and use the colors you want. You can keep out the colors you don't want. You can make them so they're very stripy and starking and only starking, very stark and use only the colors you want in very specific areas. It's completely up to you. There's a lot of options, and it's just a lot of playing around and having fun. For instance, this one had a lot of green, as you can see, a lot of green, a lot of yellow. A lot of the natural color coming out and a little bit of the red. This one's got a lot more of the purples and the reds and none of the green or the orange. So I think I'm going to get a very different color coming out of this one. But I think that's okay. I think when I spin them and ply them, they'll all look amazing. making my own music here. The music of the me. Doop. And you want to pay attention to where there are more bare spots because they're not going to, it's not going to lock in. Like there's some bare spot right here. I might go over that a few times just to make sure that stuff gets caught in there. And, uh, Right here, I've got some bear, and I'm gonna go back in with some and make it covered up there. Right here, also some bareness. Now, if I was really convinced that I wanted to keep this pink 
line that I've got going in here, I would rip out pink and make sure to go over that in pink. But again, as I'm trying to blend the colors, I don't really mind what's happening there. And you want to try and get an even coating. There we go. You really just want an even coating directly across your blending board from top to bottom. Now, when you spin these, you're going to end up getting a more even distribution if you do it across here. If you do it in strips, it is going to spin in strips. So if you are trying to put stripes or strips in, then do know that it will spin out that way as you spin it up because you're going to be spinning from left to right or right to left because you're going to be using the from a top to bottom of a pony, right? So for instance, if I wanted to make a pony and I wanted to just have a little bit of this blue come out during the one spot and I wanted then I wanted a strip of this dark stuff I would leave only this over here and then when I'm spinning it this stuff is going to come out with this and then it's going to change to this see what I'm saying so if you're trying to plan your spin or if you're trying to arrange them so that you like have half and half or a tri stripe or anything or if you're trying to do a rainbow always do it from right to left or left to right not top to bottom because it won't have the same effects I want the blue throughout so of course I'm gonna add it throughout And of course the parts where you can see it more are gonna be the parts where it uh, comes out the most in the spinning, because that's just how it works. That's just how it works, no matter how you spin it. So, but I like the blue and I wanted to add just something bright because this is a very dark colorway and I love it to bits, but it's also two ounces, so I know that adding a lot, adding some is not going to add a lot in terms of extra ounces. So for instance, on this one, I'm going to put in, here I have just a little bit of blue dyed um, fire starter, Angelina, whatever you want to call it. And I just, if I just want to run sparkle throughout, but I don't want a lot of sparkle, you'll see I have just the barest minimum of sparkle in my hands. This stuff will clump like nobody's business, so be careful with that. I'm just going to run it, and it's going to leave behind a couple little threads, and that is going to be more than enough, because with this, less is always more. Unless you want to look like a 1980s Christmas tree, in which case, then take a whole handful and just throw it on there and have, have at it, but... I just want a very little bit. I'm not even going to use the whole spiel that I have in my hands, maybe. I don't know. And I'll, by the way, this stuff goes everywhere. It will be up your nose. And if you're looking for individual fibers that you can play with on a blending board, I do recommend Paradise Fiber. They sell little packets and small amounts of things that you can just buy and play with. And they're actually really well priced. They are out of America, so if you're Canadian, there will be that whole thing to deal with. But I think that Canadians deal with that no matter what. And so, here's our next one. I'm just going to go down. Make sure everybody is packed in nice and neatly. Uniform. Uniform. And then I'm gonna do 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 lift up the little lift up the little bum. I apologize, I'm having allergies because people have campfires going and it's driving my noses wild. My multiple noses, clearly. Okay, so we're gonna roll. Oh, I see that I didn't get everybody. I see, I see, I see. Fail. Just 
gonna give you a little pull and a raise. And I can see some spots where I uh, did not get it as packed as I probably would have liked. I'm okay with that. I like my punies tight. If you do not do the pull and roll a little bit, it's gonna be looser and it is gonna fall apart a little more. That's why I like them like this. I like them nice and tightly rolled. I also like the fact that if you put the sparkle inside, it's kind of like you're hiding, like a little treat there. It's gonna be a little dash of sparkle that you didn't know was there. Or it's kind of a way to trick somebody, like if you're making them for your friends and they hate sparkle and you wanna be a total butthead, you throw a little sparkle in there and then when they're spinning, they're gonna be like, oh no, there's sparkle in here. Be like, that's right, sparkled you, didn't I? And I'm just gonna, I'm just going over it and making sure it's nice and flattened. Now, if you're doing this with a sturdier yarn, anything like a Targi, a Corydale, um, your BFLs, etc., they are not going to be as flyaway as this. This is the Yak content and the Super Wash, Super Fine, Super Wash, what is it? It's a Merino, it doesn't say if it's Super Wash, but the Merino also, short, staple, and slippery. See, if you ever, if you ever have the chance, you should get into the Spunky Eclectic Club. It's been years since I've been in, but uh, back in the day, she always writes a little bit about what the fiber is and the fibers change. So if you're new to short, slippery fibers, you may want to try spinning from the fold or give a little help or to give a little help with this one because the short fibers need the most twists, more twists than average to stay together. And it's best suited for luxury garments that don't take a beating. It's not to say you can't use them for socks, they just won't wear as well as a tough fiber. Happy fibering. So she always gives you tips on how to spin and what you're dealing with, but it's definitely the yak that is flying away on this. So again, I'm just gonna, I'm not sure, can you see me? There you go. So I'm just doing that before I pull, before I pull. And again, pulling one dowel separate from the other dowel And there's my second one. Uh, they will come off basically the same size depending on how well you smush them, as you can see. First one, a little longer, didn't smush as well in the, the middle there. Second one, much better smushed. Uh, length difference. Uh, there's about an inch of a length, inch and a half, two inches of a length difference. Same amount of fiber almost, but uh, just uh, different, different. Just different, different. They will spin up beautifully though. I'm looking forward to playing with them. And I will continue onward, onward and upward. If you want to, you know what? I'm just gonna make a crazy one just to show you some weird stuff you can do. So one more, no holds barred. This is not gonna be with those ones. I'm just gonna throw everything I got at this. How's that? I got some of this and it's already, it's already got sparkle in it. So we're just gonna. We're gonna play with this. We're gonna throw this on here. It appears to be bright red or pink. For people who prefer art yarn, this is where you can get really insane, I tell ya. Right, so I'm gonna do some red. And I can already see the sparkle being left behind. Whee! Okay, so there's some red. What is this? This is purple. This is purple cloudy. I think it's alpaca, or it's a short staple. And this is a short staple, I think, or alpaca. It's, I mean, a long, it's either a long wool or an alpaca. And it's bright purple. I think it's part of a, was part of a bat. I think I made a bat, and this is part of it. And this is long wool. 
You don't even need to know what you're putting in, really. I mean, look, here's a piece of green. I have no idea, but I'll put it in because it's bright and I like it. Now, what do we have here? Ah, some nublies. Nublies. Uh, who doesn't want nublies? I like nublies. Let's just... Those are going to be a beast when they come out. These will give you some texture. Texture is our, our fun point, right? Let's just throw some texture. What about this? This is Cotswold and Texel. That's what it is. And it's bright purple. Now this stuff is definitely going to spin up like an art yarn. And it's going to be kind of insane. Just saying. There's nothing wrong with that. If, if that's your jam, you do you. You do you, boo. This just still has some grease on it. I will have to be careful with my with my stuff. You gotta be careful with this though. You don't wanna leave too much grease on it. You don't wanna leave anything with grease on it actually. So make sure to clean it off really well afterwards. I've got some BFL locks here. Look at these locks. These are so locky. They're full of crimp. Crimp and lock. It sounds like a hair brand. Can I you borrow your crimp and lock? These guys don't even want to like play with me. They're like, nope, nope, we're gonna be locks forever. Here you go. How dare you? How dare you try and think we can be blended in? We're locks. Okay. There's some locks. What have we got here? Here we have some other. Here's some blue. Let's use some of this blue. I don't know what it is. We'll just throw it on over top. Why don't we? Because we can. I'm gonna throw in everything at this except the kitchen sink and see how far I can get. Now because of the locks and the way they form, they're gonna like puff out like this. So you may wanna run your thing over just to pack them in for the purpose of getting more stuff on there because, you know, blending. Oh look, here's some sari silk. Here's some orange sari silk. That's even, it's even more intense, right? Here we go. We're just, we're gonna, this is gonna come out, let me tell you. When you spin this stuff, it's, it's a beast of a new, of a new issue. If you're, if you're not careful and it does not take kindly to being separated from its brethren. It does not. And if you want to use something like a sari silk, but you don't have any sari silk, and hey, who has sari silk laying around? You can also just like unwind a spool of thread and cut it up and call that it like that works too. Or if you have a silk thread, you can go buy silk thread in bobbin form at like your Joann's for my Americans or at your fabric land. For my Canadians, you can go get silk threads pretty much anywhere and you can just unravel them and cut them up, call it a day. And I'm just ripping them up, throwing them in. There we go. What do you think, crazy enough? Are we crazy enough? I don't know. I don't know. What else do I have? I'm sure I've got something else. What is this down here? What are you? I've got a bag of super fine merino baby alpaca baby Campbell mulberry silk. This is like everything but the kitchen sink got thrown into this one. So why don't we just throw it on top? Why not? Why not? We can. You know what? We can. It'll add some, it'll mute our colors, right? Let's just throw it all in. Pretty sure this was in a goodie bag from SSK one year. And this is from, this one is from Spotted Alpaca. Spotted Circus. Spotted Circus Alpacas. And they are awesome. Always get their stuff. If you like alpaca, it's got, they have such nice stuff. I've spun their stuff. Oh. Okay. I think after I put this on, this is going to be like the, 
the final hurrah for us on this, on this everything but the kitchen sink. Rolog Poony mysteriness, right? I hope my voice is loud enough. I hope that when I re like go to upload this, it's really well done. I apologize if it's not. Okay, now we're gonna get everything down. It's such a lovely sound, I know. It's so, mm. And we're just gonna get everything up. Get up under there. I like to bust, bustle. I'm not sure if that's, I like buttress, there you go. I like to buttress this up against the bottom row so that I can get everything all coordinated. Okay, now this is gonna look insane as I turn it, so are you ready for this? Cue the music. You ready for this? The pulling and lifting is gonna be harder with everything I threw in here. So it is going to be very nubbly and it is not gonna be very uh, well packed. But that is the nature of the art yarn and the art puni, and the art roll egg, et cetera, et cetera. Now you saw everything we put in here. It's almost like a surprise for whoever spins it, right? Like, cause like so much stuff is gonna come out of here. And that is kind of the fun part. You can just really jack them in and like, then we got like a little, if you aren't careful, all kinds of stuff comes out. And I'm just gonna make sure it's all nice and down, but it's not gonna be super nice because there's so much stuff in here. As you can see, our locks are poking out and uh, we've got some of our sari silk poking out. Got another little locky poking out. All the different fibers are doing their own thing. And we're gonna pull it out. And that is our art puni. And when we spin it, there's gonna be all kinds of insanity because we've got these locks and the silks and the Firestar or Angelino or whatever. And we've got all these different kinds of yarn going, yarn, all these different kinds of fibers going in here. It is gonna be a hot mess, but a beautiful hot mess. And uh, yeah, so that's what happens when you try to make them interestingly. And it is fun and it will spin up fun. But now I have to clean this. You will notice I used it that way to push everything down. Now I'm using it this way to get everything up. And always remember to clean your instruments before you put them away because you don't want anything funky laying on them. If you find that the stuff you've been using is a little too greasy for some reason, like I said, that one, there was still some grease in it. And, I'm, and I don't want that on my thing. You can do a quick run over these, but make sure that they're completely dry because you don't want them to rust. And that, my dear viewers, it's leftovers from cleaning. It's a chaff, it'll go into the, I, throw it away. If you make stuffed animals, you can save all your chaff and use it to stuff them, but that's just a little too much fiddliness for me right now. So I am going to leave you. I may continue to make some of them out of the stuff I originally started with so that I have a series of them to do. I wish you all the luck in the world, and please post pictures of your punies and roll eggs if you make them.